Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Cam Doc. My name's Shane and I'm a final year medical student and neuroscience supervisor at the University of Cambridge. And this is how best to manage your time. <laughs> So let's get to it then. Step one, list all your long-term and short-term goals and objectives and tasks. So what do I mean by that? So for example, I have my year six exams coming up in December. Uh, those include my ethics paper, um, a written uh, SBA, uh, two of them, and I also have a situational judgment test. So I know that those are essentially my long-term goals. I need to basically do those exams and do well in them. So in the short term, I have to plan how I'm going to study and revise in order to achieve that long-term goal. So in the short term, I'm talking about what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, what I'm going to be doing in that week, and what I'm going to be doing in that month. So by basically listing your long-term goals, objectives, and tasks, and then basically deriving your short-term goals, objectives and tasks based on that, it allows you to have this structure and framework of things that you need to be doing. And that's a scaffold that you can put onto um, the extra things that you want to be doing. Right, so once you've listed all your long-term and short-term tasks, objectives, goals, it's now time to basically carry out a bifactor coding. So. Bifactor coding is essentially a process that I do where I look at a particular task and I decide its priority and its flexibility. So priority is basically how important that is. And flexibility is essentially if it's a fixed thing, meaning if it's fixed in time and date or whether I can do it basically whenever I want to. So to give you an example, in preclinicals, something like a lecture is for me, relatively high priority. It's quite important to go to a lecture. And also it's very low flexibility, meaning it's fixed in time and I had to make it at that time. I couldn't just go to it whenever I wanted. So that would be an example of high priority and low flexibility in my preclinical years. In my clinical years, say something like a ward round, I'd kind of class that as relatively low priority because I've been to several ward rounds, especially if I'm placed in the same ward for a long time. And I'd class the flexibility of that to be quite high because I can go to it whenever I want. And that would be a clinical example of a, of a task that I have to do. So those are kind of academic things that I want to be doing. So to give you an example of something kind of extracurricular that I want to do, say gym. So gym for me is relatively high priority. It's something that I have to do, in my opinion, in my eyes. And for me, it's also very high flexibility in the sense I can do it almost whenever I want to, especially because my gym is 24 seven. So once I've carried out this analysis or bifactor coding, I can then logically plan when I'm going to do what. Right, so step three is basically planning your day, week, month, etc. So after you've carried out this bifactor coding, which was step two, you look at each task and you essentially fix the tasks that are high priority and low flexibility. Essentially, these are tasks that you have to do and you have no control over when you can do it. And after I've fixed those tasks, I then go on to look at my high priority and high flexibility tasks. So essentially, I fit around the things that I want to be doing around the high priority, low flexibility tasks that I've already fixed. So an example of a high priority and high flexibility task for me is going to the gym. So I can basically fit the task of going to the gym around my prefixed high priority, low flexibility tasks like going to a lecture, for example. So once I've done that, I then basically look at how efficiently it's already organized. So to give you an example of what I mean by that, say I have a lecture 9 to 10, then I have a lecture 12 to 2. So I basically have a two hour gap 
between 10 and 12, between the two lectures. Say if I was close to the gym and all of the lectures were happening close to the gym, I would plan to gym within those two hours because it's very efficient, it minimizes the time taken between going between different places. So that would be a very good way of efficiently planning. Alternatively, say if the lectures were happening near a library, I might go and pre-read for the next lecture or I might post-read the lecture that I've already had. So essentially when you're going about planning your tasks for the day, week, etc. Keep in mind efficiency and maximize that. So limit the amount of time that's wasted in traveling between places. And that brings me on to another key principle, which is discipline. So once you've set your tasks for the day, week, etc., stick to them. That brings us on to step four, which is essentially a process of evaluating how successful your plan is. So how do we go about evaluating the plan? Uh, or how successful it is. So you can use several indicators and several markers. Say if you're in your preclinical years, you might use things like how well you're doing in supervisions, um, how is your attendance at lectures, um, how good are your essays, um, how is your performance in mocks, etc. In your clinical years, you could be using things like how good are your clinical skills, do you feel confident when you go onto the wards, are you confident in taking histories, um, are you uh, generally attending wards at an acceptable level, etc. So those are good indicators to tell you, okay, this plan is working. The tasks that I've listed and the tasks that I've planned for the day and the week are allowing me to achieve my long-term goals and allowing me to progress in my medical career. However, if you are finding that the indicators that you're using are showing you to be actually, you know what, you're not doing that well in your essays or you're not actually taking good histories or people are, you know, doctors are picking up that you're actually not turning up as often as you should be, it's time to go back to the drawing board and slightly alter your plan. So you might basically consider where you could be more efficient, you know, could I actually be doing this at a different time to minimize the wasted time um, or possibly could I be decreasing some extracurricular thing to allow me time to study some more. Alternatively, you might find that you're actually smashing preclinicals or smashing clinicals and actually you could be doing a little bit extra and things that you want to be doing, so joining more sports societies or any other clinical societies that you want to be joining. But this being said, it's very important to have a good grasp of your health. So, you know, it's very tempting to do a lot of things and do everything you want to be doing at the cost of things like sleep, physical health, emotional health, etc. And obviously that's not good because at the end of the day everything is about health, health is the most important thing and essentially that's going to be a main factor driving your happiness. So very, very important that you keep that in mind and when you reevaluate and replan, keep that as a focus also. And that brings us on to step five. Step five is a process of essentially implementing the changes and carrying out the process of reevaluation over and over again. So essentially, it's to make sure that your plan continues to improve, it continues to work, and you basically don't get left behind um, and don't let allow, don't allow things to pile up on top of you. So that has been a quick summary of how best to manage your time. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like, follow and share. Make sure as many medical students as possible finds out about us and what we're trying to do. But that's it from me for today and I'll see you guys next time.